you're going to submerge them. Okay, so yeah, there are different contraindications for submersion versus non-submersion. If I'm just, if you've got a wound on your hand and I'm going to do it, it, it wouldn't probably matter as much to me. Of course, inflammation. Has inflammation, so acute, acute inflammation. Maceration, right? If I'm already a little waterlogged, I don't want to waterlog more. How many wounds they have is an excellent one. If you've got multiple wounds that are going to be submerged, you're running the risk of cross contaminating those the person wounds. That has MS. The person that has MS, I'm not going to want to submerge, probably. Are they talking about if it was bleeding, the wound was bleeding? If it's actively bleeding, I'm probably going to increase local circulation. So if it's if there's much blood coming out, I for sure don't want to do it. Anything else? Infection. I, I need to look at other equipment that may get submerged. So obviously, if they've got a cast or an IV, or if they've got a port, I need to talk to them. Um, you know, one of our students has a, a insulin pump port. If, if they've got a, a nice op side, if they've got a clear occlusive bandage on it, they may be okay with submerging it. You may be okay. You may not be. I would probably try not to submerge it. Um, fill the tank appropriate temperature for the condition, instruct the patient and the purpose and what to expect. I, I was talking to people about this with some of the transfer stuff. You know, if your patient's not independent in transfer, if you can't just expect them to be in their chair, just say, go get in your chair, and you're not worried at all about how they're going to get themselves in there, then they're independent and you don't need to instruct. If that's not the case, there's opportunity for instruction. So always good to explain to your patient with anodyne, with whirlpool, with any modality, why you're using it, and what the expected result is going to be, and if they're going to feel anything or not feel anything. Most people have had a whirlpool, so it's not as long a conversation as pulse lavage is going to be here next semester when we do electrical stimulation. <coughs> the explanation is usually a little bit longer, but hey, you know, the PT or we or whoever made up this, this decision, the physician, whoever said the decision was to do this, felt that whirlpool would help. It's going to help increase circulation, it's going to help get some of that. Uh, scar tissue softened up so that we can get it out of there. It's going to help that, that chemical that we're putting on there to kind of eat up that scar tissue work better. It's going to help us clean it out. It's going to help promote circulation, whatever. This is um, about this temperature. You can see on here it's this temperature. It's not going to be as hot as the whirlpool you sit in at Frank's with a beer after, after <laughs> beer or whatever. So it's appropriate to not, you don't have to over explain. I over explain to you guys sometimes. <laughs> you talk long enough and then it's the peanuts. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> um, position so that they're comfortable. If they're going to be hanging an arm or an extremity over it and you want to get some kind of padding, we usually double up towels to, to pad. We don't want to hang it down in the whirlpool where it's going to fall in there and get sucked into the intake. We don't want it to get soaked, so you know if your if your towel's really low and it starts to get soaked, it's going to wick moisture up, and then all of a sudden their shirt's wet anyway. What does dependent position mean? Anytime you're hanging down against gravity like that, mm -hmm. is it so my foot would be in a dependent position. Right only now. to your lower. No, my arm. So and you want what was that down. related right. to? I just in reading the whirlpool thing, there were some comments about dependent Yeah, position. well, it's going to affect it affects circulation a little bit. I mean, obviously, I'm going to have different circulation if I'm here than if I'm here. So if, if I've already got wound problems or venous problems and I'm in a dependent position and I increase the circulation, am I going to be able to clear that back out again? So if I've got really bad venous insufficiency and I stick that limb in there and it's dependent and it's hotter now, I'm going to probably actually increase their swelling and could cause problems. Um, but sometimes we use this for, especially like in hand therapy, we might just be using a warm whirlpool to be doing exercises in. Or, so there's a number of different things that we could be doing with these. Um, adjust aeration, force, direction, and depth. Turn on and set timer. So my timer is in the window, so there's a timer there. I'll bring a call switch in here so that you have one that you could give them. First time, I don't usually leave them alone. And you know, even the last time, some people I won't leave alone. I put a link in your in your PowerPoint that uh, goes to a story about a guy drowning in a physical therapy clinic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I believe I believe he was actually in a therapeutic pool and not a whirlpool. Mm -hmm. But it is not 
unheard of for someone to be in that big tall chair with their foot down in here. They get a little diabetic sugar thing going on. It's hot in here. They unwrap that wound. They're looking at it, and then all of a sudden, face first into the whirlpool. It's, it is. It is. It has happened. That's not just you know uh, an empty warning. People. People have. Take them out. Do you have towels? Does that slip all over, or how do you do well, mats, or do they match? Right you now, I'm dry, and then when you come out, I'm going to put a towel underneath it as you come out, so that I don't. So I try to do what I tell my kids to do. You know, dry off while you're still in the shower before you get out and track it all around. <laughs> so bring it up, let it hang, pat it dry, put a couple towels on their lap, and then I shouldn't get water on the floor. If I get a bunch, significant amount of water on the floor, I need to stop and clean it up like that. Mm -hmm. I do not, you know, I've, I've had that same thing where this thing comes splashing out and then they go over here and do it and then they come back over here and then they do their whole treatment standing in a quarter inch of water. Um, you, like I went and got my towel and wiped up my water after I intentionally uh, flooded it for you guys. You got to stop and clean up now as a safety concern. Um, and then when you're done, you need to check the skin, make sure it looks all right, you didn't cause any new bleeding, or if maybe part of your deal was to try to loosen up so that you could do some some blunt debridement where you could get in there with some twizzer, tweezers and pick some stuff off or get that little bit of gauze that's still stuck in there out or something, and then re-bandage. Okay? Whirlpool, easy peasy, chicken squeezy.